Hello Titan fans and welcome back to Manga Horse, the horse with the funny accent. Today's video is going to be very special, because it is the most extensive guide on the ODM gear you have ever seen, and contains information from 5 different sources. Attack on Titan anime, the Attack on Titan manga, and the wiki page. And also, the Attack on Titan before the full manga, and its wiki page. And of course, hours of research on my part. In this video, I will explain the device function, and also unravel the true and most kept secret of the ODM gear. And yes, the ODM gear has parts that none of you have heard before. Unless you are familiar with the Before the Fall manga, which is a separate manga series that takes place around the year 775, approximately 70 years before Bertold broke the wall, and tells the story of the Survey Corps' downfall and how they managed to keep from disbanding, and also how the ODM was crafted in the first place. This video is going to be packed with information, including the first titan to ever get inside the walls, the cult that let him in, and also who was the one who managed to kill him. We will also discuss today about its secret components and the secret material it shares with the anti-titan swords, which their true name is the Snap Blade, and one very crucial component that is actually one of the reasons everyone is interested in Paradise Island. Now, even though manga readers may have been exposed to some information, it wasn't the full version, so this video is about to contain some spoilers for manga readers and also anime watchers, so you can choose later if you want to take the red pill and continue to know the truth. So what is the omnidirectional mobility gear? The ODM gear was designed to allow the soldier the ability to fight titans in three-dimensional space while matching the speed of a titan and even surpassing it. Its previous versions were not as good and we will also discuss them in this video. Some general information. Vertical maneuvering equipment training is a really hard and long process that allows humans, which are limited to move on the ground, to adapt to movements in the third dimension. It requires great physical strength, especially in the legs, and also spatial recognition abilities, as well as the mental strength to not lose control while in panic. It is one of the first things a soldier needs to master after enlisting in training, and those unable to remain upright are dismissed. Three years of training are needed before officially becoming a soldier. Many run away or are driven out before graduation. The training is so intense that some actually get injured very severely doing it or even die. So what does the device actually do? As I mentioned in one of my past videos, the facts and mistakes of Attack on Titan, the ODM gear doesn't make the soldiers fly. Its operation is based on physics, momentum, and most importantly, pressure from a mysterious gas, which I will reveal in this video. The ODM allows the user to shoot two anchors individually in different directions, each anchor connected to a coil that runs through the interior of the device. By using the specially designed sword handles, the soldier can pull himself towards the target at a very high speed, which can be controlled by a special fan that controls the gas distribution. The strong pulling force creates a momentum that allows the soldier to fly through the air and to keep moving in the air by repeating the same process over and over. The steam that you see coming out from the back end of the device is not a jet that pushes you, it is simply the gas remains that disperse into the air to help the device from overheating or exploding. But why did the idea for the ODM gear even come up? You need to understand that before the ODM age, things were a lot worse than at the time of our story. Back then, the Survey Corps went outside of the walls very few times, and almost every time they suffered almost 100% mortality rate. Remember back in the first season, how the people disrespected the scouts? Well, in past times, things were a lot worse, and the scouts were about to be dismissed from their jobs for not being able to kill, hurt, or even know what the weak points of a titan. 
They used regular swords that didn't do any damage to titans, and even if they did, the way to kill a titan was still unknown. New hope for humanity. The first ones to come up with the idea for the ODM were an inventor named Angel Altonen and his apprentice and friend Corina Ilmari. Corina was the one that suggested that if they want to close the gap between a human and a titan, they have to make the playing field more equal for them. But Angel and Corina didn't have an idea on how to do it. That until one day they went to the industrial city, also known as Factory City, which is located inside War Rose. This is the place where all weapons are made in, and because of that, it is highly guarded by the military police. Soon after that, they were introduced to a special cave that contained a very strange solid substance with very unique properties. And don't you worry, we will get to it very soon. Angel and Corina both understood that this substance is a very good power source and they wanted to use it in order to build a device to fight Titan with. They knew that the basic problem was that Titans were a lot taller than humans. And fun fact, Back then, the highest titan was only 10 meters tall. And that was the point they both realized what they needed to build. They used the mysterious substance to create highly pressurized gas that was inserted into a large canister on a device that looked like a backpack and connected to a trigger that could shoot one anchor and to pull the user only in that direction. The first version of the ODM was created and was given the simple name, the device which back then didn't have any weapons attached to it. Wanting to test the device in action, they went into Shiganshina with another inventor named Xenophon Harkimo, who also helped them to finish the device. But on that same day, the mysterious cult called the Titan Worshippers were able to kill the governor of Shiganshina and for the first time ever, they opened the gate to the outside world in order to let the titans in. We don't know for sure if they had any, any information about the titans or they just considered them as a release for this horrible world. What we do know is that they were highly capable and violent and were able to kill all the survey corps and garrison soldiers in order to open that gate. And on that day, Humanity got a taste of the horrible monsters that walk outside the walls. That day, humanity met Mammon. The 10 meter titan killed almost 5,000 people that day, eating everyone in sight, until he got to the group of inventors, and before their eyes, he crushed and killed Corina. Seeing that, Angel was broken. But acting fast, he slashed Mammon's leg using a sword he created in the factory city. But seeing that the titan regenerated almost immediately, Angel grabbed the device and lured Mammon outside of the walls. Then he managed to use the device to climb up the wall, but due to a malfunction, he was stuck in the air and was saved by his childhood friend Maria, who was part of the garrison. Angel promised that day that he will kill Mammon. Sometime after that day, the survey corps went on an expedition outside the walls. Angel, who now knew that the ultra hard steel his sword was made of, can cut through a titan, decided to make a net that could capture a titan using the same material. He invented the titan capturing net, that we all saw being used against the female titan inside Wolcina. Angel made this net to help his other childhood friend, Sorum, who was in the survey corps, and Angel wanted to protect him at any cost. And using this special net, the survey corps capture a titan for the first time. Then they try to slash him and cut him in different places to discover its weak point, but they didn't manage to find it. But in the process, the titan broke loose and started to kill the soldiers. And out of nowhere, a group of titans soon arrived led by the infamous Mammon that attacked the city before. The first titan to ever been killed. According to history, the first man to ever kill a titan that day was a commander in the scouts called George Pical, what gave him the title George the Hero. 
But unfortunately, that history was actually a lie. That day, in order to allow the soldiers to escape, Sorum sacrificed himself by letting Mammon catch him and set off a bomb that also blew him in the process. Although Sorum died, the bomb hit Mammon in the nape, and when George came to help, he saw that the Titan disappeared completely. George knew that this is going to be the end for the scouts, so instead of telling everyone about Sorum, he told the world that he killed the Titan using the device Angel built for the scouts. Two things happened that day. The scouts got a fresh start and respect for being able to kill a Titan. And because George witnessed the explosion, humanity now knew for the first time that the Titan's weak spot is in the back of their heads. After hearing about Sorum's death, Angel was devastated. By now, he had lost two of his childhood friends, Sorum and Corina. On that time, he continued to work on the second version of the device alongside Xenophone, but soon he exiled himself to the underground city inside Walsina, and where Levi Ackerman will be born years later. Angel started to lose his eyesight, and it would be many years until he would work on the device again. He left the device to Xenophone, who managed to perfect the device and the mechanism to be more easy to control with one hand. And although the device could now move both vertically and horizontally, it still lacked the control or movement from side to side. He also added a big sword made of the same ultra hard steel like Angel used on the Titan Mammon. And we will talk about that steel and about our first big secret right now. And that's where the spoilers begin. Just before the big reveal, and if you got this far and enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and to hit that little bell thingy to stay notified. You can't even imagine how much time and effort it took me to bring you this video, and it will mean the world to me if you could support my channel and subscribe. And with that, we are going to reveal our first secret. The steel that cuts titans. Believe it or not, the ultra hard steel and the only thing that can actually hurt and kill a titan is actually made of, and get ready for this, a special plant. Yes, a plant called the iron bamboo. The iron bamboo is a strange plant that grows near the industrial city, right next to the cave where Angel and Corina found the substance that powers their device. It is the strongest metal they have on the island and they have a very limited supply of it, and that is why they need to harvest it with caution to avoid running out. The iron bamboo is so strong it can take on any sword, and can only be manufactured to swords and other parts using an intense fire from a furnace in the industrial city. And just a little word about plants. Although there isn't a known plant like this in our world, there are several flowers that can actually absorb heavy metal from the ground, for example gold, and one of the flowers that can actually do this is the sunflower. So in our case, I think it is safe to say that the mysterious iron bamboo is absorbing some of the substance that is in the caves below, and that is what gives him its unique features. And get ready, because our next and biggest secret is coming real soon. As you remember, we left Xenophon when he improved the device, but after not being able to improve it even further, the project was frozen for the next 15 years. And we'll only see the day of light when a young girl named Charlie Innocencio will apply to work with Xenophon as his new apprentice. After she heard the story that you discovered today, Charlie went with Kuklo, which is our main protagonist, on a mission to find Angel and to finally finish the design of the device. After finding Angel half blind and alone in the underground city, they managed to spark the flames in his heart again and to convince him to return to work on the device. Charlie, Angel and Xenophon started working together on the device, but the one that solved the biggest problem and finally enabled the device to be used with both hands was Charlie who designed a special mechanism that can house two sword blades and even replace them. And that is after Angel introduced them to his last invention. 
a sword so light and flexible but also hard enough to cut through a titan's skin. You know it as the anti-titan swords, but their true name is the snap blade. And they are made of, you guessed it, the iron bamboo. And with all the parts now available, the free built the device from scratch, improving every aspect of it, and now that the device could support movements in all directions using both hands, a new name was chosen, the Omni Directional Mobility Gear, or in short, the ODM. By the way, the first person to ever try and test it was Kuklo, our protagonist in the Attack on Titan before the fall manga also known as the son of Titan, and if you want to know his story which is an amazing one, please comment and let me know. Charlie also designed a special black box that is made of iron bamboo and placed in the sword handles of the ODM gear. Its main purpose is to operate the ODM gear and to control the gas distribution, and with that we are going to reveal our biggest secret about the ODM gear. So, let's talk about gas. Let's return 15 years back to Corinna and Angel in the cave. As you remember, they were introduced to a certain substance. This substance was very similar to ice, and indeed it was frozen. But the second you apply direct heat to it, it creates a small blast and turned into gas, almost immediately. That what made Angel and Corinna think of using it to create pressure inside the tanks, and because it looks like ice, this substance got the name the Ice Burst Stone. I sat in front of the periodical table of contents for hours trying to find elements that match this substance at some level, and in fact I found some, and I will mention two. The first one is potassium. Potassium is a mineral, an electrolyte. It helps your muscle work, including the muscle that control your heartbeat and breathing, Without it, you can't live. The second one is volcanic glass, or in the name that might be more familiar to some, obsidian. Volcanic glass is the product of a rapidly cooling magma, which is much more like the ice burst stone in shape, and also contains potassium along with other minerals. Volcanic glass, as the name suggests, is created in the proximity of volcanoes, and if you watched my video about the purple flowers and the island true location, you may know that in our island there are five different volcanoes, and that will make sense. Now if you don't know which island is that, go watch my video after you finish this one. You will enjoy it, I promise. And now, after we know all the story and we have all the details, I will now connect this to our story in Attack on Titan. And again, Spoilers are coming up, but I will keep them to a minimum for you, anime watchers. So, Marley has got to a point where it was left behind technologically. While the entire world has advanced, they relied on the power of the Titans. But they knew that the day will come when Titans will not be enough and that they have to get in the tech race. After Zeke took Mike Zacharias, ODM gear, he was very impressed, as he should, because this technology wasn't supposed to be available on this island. Back then we didn't think about it too much, because we were all busy looking at the big talking monkey. Marley claims that there is a fossil under Paradis Island, they in fact referring to the iceberg stone, but still they don't know its true nature. And because the titans are becoming a word of the past in their opinion, and that they only affect Eldians, Marley's main objective is to secure a power source strong enough to win the tech race, and to be ahead of other nations, which until now were scared of Marley because it had the control of the titans. And indeed, Marley should be scared, because manga readers know that some device is already being produced utilizing the power of the ice burst stone instead of regular fossil fuel. The ODM gear is an amazing device and creation that is made from iron bamboo which is produced probably from the gas that runs through the device. And that is, my friend, a perfect synergy. 
and one of the best devices I have ever seen in an anime. One more honorable mention goes to the anti-soldier mobility gear, which is basically the ODM gear only designed to fight humans instead of titans, replacing the snap blades with high caliber single shot pistols. The gas tank is on the back of the soldier, and the anchors are shot from the hands and not from the hips, what gives it less maneuvering ability than the actual ODM gear. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video because it is very special to me and as I said I think I am the first one on YouTube to ever make this kind of video about it, so I think it deserves a like. Pretty please? If you enjoyed this video and you discovered something new, please subscribe and share this with other Attack on Titan fans, it will mean so much to me and will definitely help me bring you much more, including really nice giveaways in the near future. I literally didn't sleep last night in order to deliver this video today, so before I will pass out, let me just remind you all to not play with gas and also to dedicate your hearts for humanity inside and outside the walls.